What? Oh my god. Because I'm such a gigantic fan of Steven Seagal. I thought you were gonna say they were not as quite as good as Steven Seagal's. Well, nobody can compare to that fat jelly piece of shit. We thought, after attack force, it can only go up, right? Yeah. So, let's grab something. Yeah. Someone on Twitter sent me a clip from the movie Kill Switch. Instantly went on, found out, amazingly, it's in Blu-ray, and bought it. Great. You found it in this country? Yes, actually. Mm. This was finally a United States release. Because Steven Seagal is a big action star. You know? Right, right, Everybody yeah. loves Steven Seagal. He's still peaking. We've been through this, okay? I'm cultivating math. Stop saying that. This is one of the biggest pieces of shit <laughs> I've ever watched. I don't say that lightly. I don't like to call movies that too often because even bad movies we get a lot of entertainment out of. Sure. Uh, this, we, we were struggling. We this were is bad. We were finding things to talk about. We were talking about other movies, better movies, what was going on in your, in your day. It was just... It didn't mm, keep us entertained. Wow. I'm, I'm going to throw, throw up. There's a big reason for that. We found out it's written by Steven Seagal. Written by oh Steven Seagal. Oh my God. This is going to be amazing. This is a glimpse inside the mind of Steven Seagal. Yep. We know he hates women. So, all the women in this are hookers. Except for the detective we just saw in the hooker shirt. Right. And yeah. his girlfriend or wife, who is a drunk. Yes. Yeah. Loves hookers being killed. No problem. Been through this drill before. I need a double. Um, he thinks he's from the South? It almost seems like he manipulates the time of death, like he's watching the clock or something. What is this fucking accent he's doing? Basically, it's a, it's a boring detective story with fight scenes interspersed and a couple random maniacal killers sprinkled yeah. throughout. Let, let's go a little deeper into the story. At the very beginning, we find a prostitute with a bomb half inserted into her chest. Sensei Seagal, of course, knows that the killer must be watching us from this apartment, goes straight to the dude's room, starts beating the brakes off him to find out what wire to cut to disarm the bomb. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We get the greatest man being thrown out a window scene of all time. Would you call it one scene or would you call it 18 scenes? I liked it so much the first time, I'm glad they replayed it 10 more times. And you were saying this was a this was a thing. This was like a, a style of shooting movies. <laughs> it was never done this. I don't know what we call it to this extent. This poorly. What do you, whatever you call it. I call it the Born Identity Two issue or whatever you want to call it. That was shaky problem. cam though. That was quick it edits. Was, and shaky it was cam, super right? quick edits. Shaky cam. This was that with somebody who didn't even know what they were doing. I hate Born Identity Two because of the way it looks. This is insane. I mean, we could not tell what was happening on screen at all. No. And he's out. I feel like I'm having a stroke watching this movie. Dude, if you had Epsil Ep did I cheat? What the hell happened to you? If you had epilepsy watching this. Then we get Handlebar, who's also killing women. Almost in the same way. Bomb guy gets out, and then they're both killing women as Seagal is trying to hunt them both down. Well, he only knows about the one. Does he? He never I... even hunts. Like he, he knew that, that the first guy who he threw out the window was out of prison. See, here's the problem. We couldn't understand anything Steven Seagal was saying. 
you were consistently turning the volume up when he was speaking and turning it down when anyone else spoke or they played <laughs> so music. This particular guy is kind of creepy. We are making up a hot shot. Between the pathetic southern accent he was attempting to do and the weird mumbly way he was giving the dialogue. Nah, he flipping the M.O., man. He trying to fuck with our heads. Say, boy, this must be my day hustling good, but boy, you know them niggas gonna be running like motherfuckers. There were some there were some high points in this movie. His co-star, his his partner in the police Jerry department. Jerry Curl. Yeah, we don't know his name. Jerry no. Curl is what we named him. He he had all we knew that he just said lines and had what was it? Aquanet or the Soul Glow? Soul from, Glow. Yeah. Oh, he's like his Soul Glow I mean, was, for sure. It was definitely like this movie came out in 08. And he definitely had like the hairstyle from like 84, 85. Yeah, he's a good 20 years behind. It was best case scenario. Just let your Isaac Hayes was in this. Oh. And this is depressing. Got a desert in his car. But you had at least one child. She was headed down a one-way path, no matter how you look at it. Yeah. Say something about childbirth being a one-way path? This is incomprehensible dialogue. Dude. This movie made us sad because... He couldn't really move. Couldn't emote. No. He was in it. I... I kind of. Kind of. So, you asked me to kind of look this up. What happened with Isaac Hayes? We know he passed away. He actually did pass away in 08. When this came out? When this came out. Okay. And he uh, suffered a stroke in 06. That explains a lot. So, he while was they were slurring his this, words a lot. Yeah, he was trying to do all right. This movie was actually released uh, after his death. And it was one of, if not the, like, last thing he actually worked on. Say, everybody have seen my balls, they're big and salty and brown. If you ever need a quick, pick me up, just stick my balls in your mouth. Just the way he was looking at the other actors when speaking, we weren't even sure if he knew what was going on. Yeah, it was, it, it was, was kind of gross. It was weird. I did not like watching that. <sighs> so what more ridiculous shit can we talk about? Um, so some weird sexy music starts to play as Seagal's pulling into his apartment. What's with the sexy time music? Oh no, he's not going home to some like hot chick half his age who can't wait to bang him, is he? Oh, oh there you go. Oh. Written by Steven Seagal. That's right. It's probably written in crayon. And then hot girls like him and and they follow him around his apartment. But he's a professional. He's got to get some work done. He does. And this is a continuing theme through the movie. Every time he comes home, mm -hmm. she's trying to bang him. He's not having it. Right, right. Remember this. It's essential to the plot. Yeah, this is super important. The reason he's so busy working all the time and not banging his much younger yeah. <laughs> girlfriend is his brother was killed in front of him by some maniac who cut his throat at a party or something. Uh, yeah. Around the turn of the century, looking at Seagal in this. What age he was pretending to be in this is a great mystery because he looks like point. shit. Bacchios, what the fuck is he wearing? Sport. Everyone around him is a good 40 years younger. Oh God, she's gonna wanna fuck him now too. <clears throat> He's a poet, I mean, at least he thinks he is. Do you recognize any of this? That's a library. Um, Cast by Steven Seagal. Jackie Miller, FBI. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> body on the body. Symbol. Why is her shirt so tight? I, I'm i assuming because Steven Seagal wrote this. <laughs> and he did the casting in this movie. He's very... I mentioned it while we were watching it. His face was very red. Red and puffy. It looked like he was going to burst. Well, it's because he did all those stunts in his fight scenes. Oh, my God. Oh, that was you this time. People won't know what we're talking about. I don't even know if we talked about the title of this yet. The generic ass. Yeah. Why is it called Kill Switch? I don't know. There's no, There's kill, no switch. kill Switch in this. No. Maybe he has a Kill Switch. You watch a Seagal movie for the fight scenes. Honestly. Right. Yeah, you don't care about his acting. He does none of the fight sequences in this. The worst stunt double ever with the worst wig. It might as well have been a woman. It could have been a woman. Hey. He's like a big, fat, giant dude. I wish I didn't stop for that donut and then that subway <laughs> and then the ice cream. 
And it could have been a 120 pound woman doing the stunts. It looked that it, bad. I don't think it looked that bad. Like you went off on it over and over and over again. It was I thought, awful. I, it was definitely a stunt double. They definitely hit his face, and that guy was could actually move and like. The stunt uh, double moved. Yeah. yeah, but he did not look like Seagal at all. No, Seagal stood there and waved his arms around, and that was it. Every fight scene that cuts to his face, he's never. It was his face in a close up, mm-hmm. and then it was the back of the stunt double actually moving. Yeah. That was not him, dude. You don't think? No. Zero is he, percent chance. Is he driving that car? I did not see. Is that his knuckle? I couldn't tell. Was it fat? It was. But then they cut it up so much, A I lot. thought I was going to have an epileptic fit. Dude, if you had epi- epilepsy... Attack Force, better than this, with the white flashes they were doing. Well, he, he was fighting zombie monsters, vampires, whatever they Way were. Way more entertaining than this garbage. And, and he beat on men in this... Like they were sides of beef, and they just kept getting up, like Rocky versus Ivan Drago. Yeah. Seriously, there, there was this fight scene where you could hear they put in sound effects of like ribs breaking, and like organs getting squished. Dude and keeps taking it. The guy stands up, like oh, whatever. This is literally our slap. This fight. is our gag. Yeah. Then the ending happened, and he he the he beat up the first serial killer. He got revenge and killed the other serial killer who killed his girlfriend. Killed his girl, living girlfriend. And then he realized that oh, the police probably think that he did it for some reason, even though that was never mentioned except by. He just disappears. Yeah, he's just like I'm just gonna leave. He leaves a note for his partner saying it's been cool. See ya. Yeah. And then it cuts to this villa in the middle of like France, France Italy. Europe. France Europe. He walks in and it's like there's like two ten year old kids and a wife and everything. It's like, oh, so good to see you. Hey, daddy. And this nineteen year old wife. That's Italian, right? Girl, there is not enough money for you to do this. He just nods approvingly. Yes. Also, how old was she when she had those boys? Uh oh. Oh no. But in the credits, she's listed as Russian woman. I'm a Russian Mongol, and I'm Russian. Love this country, love the people. But we couldn't tell if they were speaking French or Italian. It sounded yeah. like both a little bit. And then he goes upstairs to have sex with her. Oh, no. Which I guess, because that's his wife, that's why he wouldn't sleep with his first girlfriend. Why did he have a girlfriend? Memphis. Why did he have a girlfriend? Why is he in Memphis at all? Oh, yeah. What the fuck? He was in Memphis long enough to become a detective in the police force. That's years. He's dating this woman long enough that she moves in with him. Or at least is always there. Having never had sex with him. Hunting serial killers in these long cases, and everybody keeps talking about his unconventional methods, Uh how much of a genius he is. He's been there a long time. And then we just find out he has a family overseas and he just goes back to them. This ending blew our minds in a way that was not quite rock and roll nightmare levels. No. But almost made me like this movie because it was so insane. There was no reason for it. <laughs> like the whole thing, the, the whole ending, they could have just had him beat up the bad guys and save the day. That's done. Print it. It's, it's Kill Switch. <laughs> it's good enough yeah. for Kill Switch. That was... <laughs> uh, script by Steven Seagal. What? It was bad. What? Is Kill Switch so bad it's good? Absolutely not. Okay, strong words. I seriously, this this there's nothing there's nothing good about this. Except the ending. I mean, you have to suffer through like 75 minutes of bullshit before you get to like the 3 minutes of like the ending is brilliant. It's But still, I'm 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 going to give it a pass. It's 
I, as I said, we were bored. The fights weren't that great. It wasn't over the top enough throughout the whole movie that I thought it was it was worth a watch. It was it was not entertaining. You throw it on in the background if you want to like point and laugh at Steven Seagal, but like then you're just a dick. The nail in the coffin is it's boring as sin. This is the second or third worst movie we've ever watched. Yeah, Howling Seven is light years beyond anything else. Like, I don't see anything else coming close no, to Howling 7. that's definitely got to be the worst movie. This is history. second or third place. This and Shocking Dark are, like, neck and neck for pulling my goddamn teeth out. <laughs> the only reason I think this is better than Shocking Dark is that ending. I thought I was having an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. It felt like it was from a different movie. Yeah. It was out of freaking nowhere. Do not watch this movie. I wish I could tell you to watch the ending, but you won't appreciate it without watching the rest of it. Without suffering. Give this a pass. It is the worst of the worst. Dude, if you had absolute ep- that she- I'm, I'm gonna, gonna throw, throw up. up. And then he had a secret life in France, Europe. <laughs> uh, script by Steven Seagal. What? It was bad. What?